I don't know if I should apologize about the lighting. If it changes throughout the video, it's because I've just had this little lamp on my desk. And I have to film all my videos at night because I have a full-time job. So today I'm going to talk about the differences between being a hospital pharmacist and a community pharmacist. So during my pre-registration year I did six months with Lloyd's Pharmacy which is a community pharmacy and then I did six months working for a mental health trust which is hospital pharmacy. At the moment I am fully employed, like per, what do you call it, full time working as a hospital pharmacist but I locum every weekend and try and keep my community knowledge up to date. So I thought I was in quite a good position to talk about what both roles entail and the disadvantages and advantages of both. If you are a student looking at this video, then what I would say is that your pre-reg experience will be different to working as a pharmacist and that your pre-reg year doesn't define anything. You can do either hospital or community afterwards, so not to worry. If you are a pre-registration pharmacist watching this video, then I hope that it can help you decide where you might want to go in the future. I've written these down in random orders. Um, some are more important than others, but I haven't put them in a specific order, so I'm just gonna go from there. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is career progression. As a hospital pharmacist, you start as a band five at pre-reg, and then you become a band six as a junior pharmacist, which is what I am now. And then after more training, like a diploma, you can become a seven, and then you can become a senior pharmacist, which is band eight. And if you decide to become a chief pharmacist, you become band nine. There's years of training in between those, and there's I think I think there's a few like eight A, eight B, eight C, and whatever before you get to a nine. But you can see that career progression, and you are on a ladder. In community, that's less so. So you are just kind of a community pharmacist. The good thing is is that you can become community pharmacist and a manager and so your salary would be higher if you were obviously doing both roles. I suppose you could become a pharmacist manager and then area manager and things like that but it's less, I think it's less defined than a hospital pharmacist role. This then leads me on to talking about salary. In the NHS as a hospital pharmacist because you can see those bands that are so clearly defined and your pay increases the more you work for the NHS you can see sort of like a clear vision of what your paycheck will be if you carry on going the right sort of upwards route. In community pharmacy this is less defined but you do start at a bigger salary. Well it is a bigger salary because you work longer hours so for instance right now I'm earning around £14 an hour as a hospital pharmacist whereas as a community pharmacist you're offered around £15 an hour but you work 45 hours a week, so your, your pay is higher, but not really considering the amount of hours that are expected of you. So in terms of salary, what I would say is you might earn a little bit less as a junior pharmacist in hospital, but then you do see like a way forward for that pay to increase, whereas in community, it's less so. It's more like you can earn a large amount of money if you become, if you become pharmacist manager, but if not, then you know you are working long hours at a rate that's not always that good. Next I'm going to talk about training. So in hospital pharmacy you are sometimes able to get the trust to fund a diploma which is like a two to three years extra course and after studying this diploma you can then try and go for higher bands and then get a pay rise. I think this is great because you're basically being paid to study and you get more knowledge while you're doing it. Conversely for community pharmacy you don't really get to do a diploma but the companies do pay you to get training that is required of community pharmacies, which is um, MURs, repeat dispensing, the smoking cessation, emergency hormonal contraceptive pill. And so the training is different and it depends what kind of you're looking for. Flexibility. You won't really find much flexibility in hospital. When you are a band six junior pharmacist, basically employed full time, I don't think I've ever seen any sort of part time band six roles. Um, as you get higher, you can then ask for flexibility but this is not seen at a junior pharmacist level. In terms of community I see a lot of my friends who have asked to drop a day even though they haven't been working that long and so you can see that flexibility um, in community pharmacy which you don't see in hospital pharmacy. Knowledge. 
The knowledge that's required of you is completely different in hospital and community. Working as a hospital pharmacist requires you to use much more of your clinical knowledge, you get access to blood results, you can check the patient's renal function, the liver function, full blood count, etc. But you can't really check this in community. In community, the knowledge that you need is sort of over-the-counter knowledge. You need to be an expert on that, be able to recommend over-the-counter products for young children all the way up to elderly. What I've personally found is that as a hospital pharmacist, I'm learning so much more, like I've learned different things every day and at the weekend I can still manage to cram in that OTC knowledge and get some experience there. I feel like community pharmacy is, the knowledge is kind of capped and it's not capped but you learn less than you do clinically in hospital, more of an accuracy checking role than a clinical role. So if you want to learn more then I would highly recommend hospital. Mindset. So in hospital you're kind of looking for doctors to prescribe things that are part of the trust formulary. So every trust has a formulary and this is like a list of drugs that that trust is happy to dispense and provide. So really when doctors prescribe you have to try and persuade them to prescribe drugs that are on that formulary. In community your mindset is totally different because you're trying to get patients in, you're trying to do medicines use reviews, you're trying to hit targets and sell OTC products if you can and if it's appropriate. And so the saving and the selling mindset is just completely different between hospital and community pharmacy. The physical aspect. So in hospital you are running around on the wards and things like that. But for me personally right now, because I can clinically check prescriptions on a screen, I can actually sit down. In community you're unlikely to be able to sit down. For some weird health and safety reason, they just won't let pharmacists have a chair or any of the dispensers, so basically you are stood up the whole day and that is just so physically tiring. So that's why I prefer hospital pharmacy. At least you can sit down and, and screen the prescriptions rather than like be stood up all day. Doctors. So as a hospital pharmacist, you're working with a huge team actually, not just doctors, like with physiotherapists, with dietitians, with nurses and doctors. And you have to build up a good relationship with doctors and make sure that you can tell them in a nice way whether you want something to be discontinued because of an interaction or whether you want them to um, change a drug that is part of the formulary that's not prescribed currently. And so I found that in hospital that's been the hardest part. There is a fine line between telling someone they've made a mistake and asking them really nicely to, t to change it. As well as this, you can also get doctors that don't really understand pharmacy. They don't really see what pharmacists are there for, so the reception can be quite cold and it takes time to build up meaningful relationships with them. So bear that in mind when you are considering being a hospital pharmacist. As a community pharmacist, you have different issues where you actually are on the phone all day trying to call a GP to get them to amend a prescription, but you can't reach them. You put on hold. Um, it's much more difficult to change things immediately. So for in hospital, you can just say, hey, um, please could you change this drug to this dose? But in community, you're not going to get that immediate change. Um, but the good thing is you're less likely to come across those doctors who are, you know, not that happy about pharmacy. I find that GPs really appreciate pharmacists help and yeah. So your exposure. I mean in hospital you will be exposed to really bad smells and wounds that you might not particularly want to see whereas in community you don't see any of that. Prioritization. So in hospital your priority is kind of different. You are able to speak directly to the patient. They're not rushed because they're you know, very unwell, they're lying in beds. The discharge medications have to be done quite quickly, but that's not too much of a problem. You're not faced with a full shop of angry customers like in community. So in community, you have to be well adapt to answering the phone, talking to a patient who wants to speak to a pharmacist, then dispensing methadone and then handing it out, screening prescriptions but also checking trays. There's so much more that you have to do in community where you're like sort of balancing things all at once. The hours. In hospital you can be asked to do on call and you may be called in to dispense things and you also can be doing late hours. In community there are pharmacies that open really late but if you're a full-time community pharmacist, you usually do have those sort of set working hours. Hierarchy. Now this is a really interesting one. So in hospital, you are the pharmacist, but if a consultant just comes over and says, no, 
what you're saying is interacting is not of that much relevance to me, then I can only document what they've said, but then it still it still goes ahead. So their decision is ahead of mine, essentially. Whereas in community, you are the one who people are coming to ask for advice. You're the one who the dispensers might ask for advice when they're saying, is this the right product that I've picked? And it's basically you on your own. In hospital, you've got the doctors and the consultants, palliative care nurses, and that will know more than you. And so you're not just the only one and you're not at the top. Whereas in community, you are the one who is making the last decision before that drug goes out to that patient. So at the end of my pre-registration year, I was offered a job at a pharmacy and they said they'd pay me about £15 an hour starting salary. And then I also was offered a job at the hospital, which is about £14 an hour. And I thought to myself, hmm, I know that the hospital pays less, but it is physically less tiring. And also I'm getting that much clinical knowledge that it's it's worth it. It's worth getting paid less because what I'm learning is more which means much more than just the one pound difference in pay. And so I went for hospital and the good thing about hospital is that you can still do locums on the weekend and I do that simply so that I can really keep my OTC knowledge up to date. And so you can do both. Whereas as a community pharmacist, it's not likely that you're going to be a community pharmacist for five days a week and then work in hospital for two days. So my recommendation is that if you want to learn a lot and if you want to be a part of a bigger team and you want to actually see the patients and talk to them when they're physically unwell and then help them become better, then to go to hospital pharmacy. If you have a really amazing sort of salesman mindset and you prefer the really clean environment and the environment where you're making the decisions and you're making the phone calls, and you're meeting the targets, then go for community pharmacy. I hope you enjoyed the video and that it was useful and if you have any questions then please ask them below.